Hi everybody, it's Francisco with the Depth Life. In this video, I'm going to share with you something that took me years to realize. And I think that it's something very important that's gonna help you in your journey as a developer. There are three different types of programmers. In this video, I'm going to explain the three different types and help you identify which one you might be. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, I'm a self-taught developer with over 10 years of experience. And in this channel, we create videos with intent for them to become resources for developers. Some videos are technical, and in some videos, I share insights that I've gathered throughout my years of experience. There are three types of programmers, and let me explain a little bit on how I came to that realization. First of all, everybody who is a developer, engineer, or programmer, whichever term you identify with, has begun a journey. Some of you might be more advanced, have been in the journey for a longer time, and some of you just started not too long ago, or maybe you're even thinking about starting. Regardless of the level of experience, everyone is in that journey. Visualizing myself in a path or in a journey, as I call it, has helped me stay motivated and not to compare myself to other developers who have more experience than, than I do. There's another big factor in this. Some people are able to understand new concepts quicker than others. Some people have the ability to invest more time into learning new things. Some developers are farther along in this journey. And not necessarily time-wise or skill-wise, it's just you can't really measure the, the skill level or how good a programmer or developer is based on the time they have been doing it for. It's a combination of multiple factors. One of them is how fast can you learn things? Someone might be able to learn things quicker than you are. Picking up new concepts to them is a little bit easier than it is to you, but that doesn't mean that they're necessarily better than you. The other factor is how much time can you invest into learning new things? So it's a combination of how long have you been in the journey how long have you been working as a developer, engineer, programmer? How many concepts have you learned? And how much time do you currently have to invest into learning new things? Taking those factors in consideration will place you somewhere along the way uh, of a developer journey. Going back to what I said a moment ago about there being three different types of programmers, I consider a type of programmer being a phase in your developer journey. And I base this on patterns that I have seen throughout my experience with interactions with different developers. Let's talk about type number one. Type number one is a developer who has recently started their journey as a developer. They are now familiar with data structures and a few algorithms and maybe getting acquainted with some of the design patterns. But they have a limited set of skills. So when they are presented with a new problem, they tend to rely back on what they feel comfortable doing because they have a limited set of skills they tend to try to use the same solution or the same skills to solve different problems so you'll start noticing that they'll start picking maybe the wrong programming language or maybe the, the wrong framework to try to develop a new product and there is nothing wrong with that. Everybody has to start somewhere. And as they move farther along in their journey, they, they're going to be able to pick up more and more skills, which takes us to type number two. These type of programmers have a broader set of skills. They are able to work on many areas of a product, the back end, front end, maybe they do mobile and they have a good understanding of things. There's one thing about them though. They feel the need to use all of their skills in one product. They are excited because they have so much knowledge and they're very eager to use that and show other people the things they can do. They tend to overcomplicate things. Sometimes there's a problem that requires a simple solution, but since they want to pack as many things as they can do into that solution, it turns out to be an overcomplicated solution, which later down the road will turn into a product harder to maintain because of the added complexity. And I think this is natural. Once they realize what they're doing, eventually they'll turn into the type three programmer. 
Type number three is a more pragmatic and practical developer. They tend to be more senior developers who have now implemented several applications and they have been involved in the maintenance work that goes into a production application. So when it comes to developing a new solution, they tend to take a step back and really think about what tools, what technologies really need to be implemented or embedded in the solution. I think that as programmers is where we want to get. As programmers, I think we should strive to be a type three developer. And throughout our journey, we'll you know, at some point go through the type one and type two. Now, which type are you? And does it really matter? I really don't think it matters. I think the purpose of this video was to sort of help you understand that, that there's no way that you can start learning now and then tomorrow or the next day you are a type 3 developer. As I explained before, the length of our journeys are different. We cannot compare you know, one developer, one programmer to another. I think that anybody can get to become a type 3 developer or what I call a type 3. The only thing is that you have to stick with it and go through the different steps along the way. Don't think that you can skip any of the phases of your journey because you need them you need to be able to build on top of what you know so far and keep doing that and then over time you're gonna have the knowledge what really matters and what i hope you get out of this video is that the only way to get better is to practice uh, to study and practice what you learn don't do one or the other i usually encourage people to start building as soon as they can there's no way you can start building if you haven't studied or learned anything. So learn something, build something, and then learn something new, build something new, and so forth. And that way you'll, you'll get more and more experience until you get to where you want to eventually be. I hope this video was helpful. And if you found it useful, please subscribe so you get notified when we publish new videos. Thank you and catch you in the next one.